don't know anything about me, I thought maybe I should give you a little introduction. Um, I was uh, originally a, a research scientist. I studied uh, physics at university. I worked with CSIRO. I worked uh, doing research at University of Queensland as well. And um, I, I worked designing uh, databases and, and computer systems for banks and for, um, for universities. And I didn't find that I got the people contact out of that that I really liked. And I always had a very strong interest in health. Um, and so I ended up studying chiropractic and through that discovered, well, the world is a completely different place to, to what I thought it was. And that's been a, a fantastic journey. But I found that inside I really enjoyed that research side and that development side and designing systems and studying and working out how, how things worked and then working out solutions to problems that then you could step back and just sort of watch them keep on solving the problem for you as you as time goes on. So I moved back into that field with the development of spinal logic. Um, Gordon Moore was a, uh, a research scientist with IBM and he noticed in 1965 that since 1958 when computers started to be made, 1958, it goes back a while, doesn't it? Since 1958 when computers started being made, he realised that the performance, the technological ability, the number of components you could shove on a board and the amount of um, output that you could get from those components when you actually made them do some kind of work was doubling roughly every 24 months. So this has been going on for some seven years ago. Wow, every, every 24 months we seem to get twice as many components on these boards and they're doing twice as much processing and, and performance. This is, this is pretty cool. And you looked at it and you thought, you know what? I predict that's going to go on for like another 10 years. I think we've got another 10 years, we're going to keep on doing that. And then, of course, it can't go on forever. And in 10 years' time, that'll probably be when it'll, when it'll finish. That was in 1965. Well, then in 1975, the next theorist came along and said, you know, I think it's going to go for about another 10 years. And another 10 years, and another 10 years. And in fact, it hasn't slowed down at all. It's kept on doubling pretty consistently every 24 months since 1958 up to the present day. And currently, the, the, the pundits are saying, it's going to go for about another 10 years. Well, good word. Yeah, but they'll, they'll, be able, they'll be able solutions, you know? Humans have this great capacity to think laterally. And that's a, and that, and that's a really good point, you know? It's, with the current thinking, yeah, we won't get, won't get beyond that. And that's why with the current thinking they had back then with our separate transistors on printed circuit boards, it was, well, we can only fit so many on the board. So about 10 years, we'll pretty much reach that limit. But then, of course, someone thought of a, of a silicon chip. Mm. Yeah. So we'll just come up with another solution, another way of getting around that limitation. So. The question I put to you is, should you use technology in your practice? And given that the performance and the capacity, the ability of technology is, is doubling every 24 months, we really want to make sure that that kind of, of performance, that kind of improvement is working inside our practice. So if we can use technology in the right way, in the appropriate way, we can get enormous leverage out of this. This is a phenomenal tool. It's a phenomenal tool. One of the problems that chiropractors have got, though, is because their main centre of, of power, their main strength is in communicating with people, hands on the spine and helping people to get well, that's really not got much to do with technology. So chiropractors have a tendency, and up until, I'd say, about 12 months ago, we still had this when we'd go to the conferences, we'd have chiropractors say, yeah, you know, I'm a bit older, and that looks really cool, but, you know, I, we just use paper records, and I think that's fine, I think that's all we need. I don't, I don't think we're, you know, I think that'll be fine till the day that I die. But um, this year, when we were at DG, we had a lot of doctors come up to us and say, you know, I've come to see you a couple of times, and I've seen the technology you got, and I, and I told you I thought it was cool, and I thought I didn't need it. We've reached that point where I think we really do. Because we've got grandmas that use mobile, that use digital cameras, right? But digital cameras are harder to use than film cameras, aren't they? I mean, film cameras, I know some of the other people here maybe have never used them. But anyway, <laughs> film cameras, you, you shove the film in and you take your pictures, you take it and then process it. It's easy. Anyone can do it. But digital cameras, they're more complex, there's more variability, there's more settings. But really, any grandma can use them now. Everybody wants to have an iPhone if they don't have one already. And they're very complicated things. Yeah, yeah, people, are used to having people are used to having technology. Oh, there's a few exceptions, but you know, yeah. there's not many of them. People are used to having technology and they're used to the, the things that it allows them to do. And uh, we need to realise that that the 20% the of things that are, that are really generating our practice, that's what the chiropractors need to keep on doing. For the 80% of things that are important, but don't generate, and need to be handled somewhere along the line, a lot of those things can be handled by computers. A lot of those things can be handled by computers. And sometimes it can seem, I think, uh, it can seem a bit threatening to the CAs, 
because it can reach a point where the CA think, well, if the computer's doing all this stuff, what's going to be left for me to do? What we really want our CAs to do, as doctors, I think the majority of us, what we really want our CAs to do is to communicate chiropractic to our patients and to care for our patients from the heart and to be there for the patients rather than be focusing on filling out receipts, um, filling in Medicare claim forms, completing documentation that needs to be done for third parties who probably will never look at it, but you need to do anyway. And then we studied that over a period of, of several weeks and then added it up to look to see where the time was actually being spent. So we wanted to know, what is it that our CAs are doing? What is it that our doctors are doing outside of adjusting so that we can actually and see how many of those things maybe we can, we can address? And it turns out that a very large percentage of those we can fix or we can eliminate with computers in quite, quite easily just by addressing the big ones. You want to make sure that you're using software that's specifically engineered for your industry so that it's obviously going to be able to leverage your resources because generalised software like Office, we can do stuff with it, but I mean, you imagine keeping your appointments in, in, uh, in Microsoft Outlook, you know? I mean, you can do it, but it's just not using the right tool. It's not using one that's really specifically engineered. So we've got this enormous, enormous power in our computer and it's using you know, a tool that just can't access that power. So to make sure that the tools we've got are really accessing that power. And, uh, and my current recommendation is to use touchscreens. You know, a little wasn't very long ago, touchscreens were really not that great and they've improved out of sight recently and I think you've all had a chance to see them. Yeah, and they're very cool and they're very efficient and the patients can use them and the patients love using them and, uh, and, they, and they certainly do save you some time.